which is good. And then I do got to change it for y'all. Pull it out a little bit. Oh, y'all can't see the screen. I got to mirror it. Okay, there we go. Bam. So, good evening, 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 good evening. All right, now I think I'm on all platforms. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok. Y'all don't need to see the board right now, so y'all can see the board later. <laughs> y'all don't need the board right now. I'm not really writing on the board. That's for my kind of notes right now. So, I want my little background on here. She said two, two nights in a row I might need rehab after this. Big dude, what's going on? How you doing? I have a challenge that I've given myself. I have to go live every day for the next 30 days. So you're going to see me if you won't here for 30 whole days. So you say two nights in a row, it's going to be 30 days in a row. <laughs> I, have, I have challenged myself to do that consistency. Remember I talked about that yesterday in my live, that I have to be more consistent in this season. And so that's my challenge is I have to do 30 days of lives. So you will be seeing me no matter what time they are. OK, uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. And I'm not going to go ahead and kind of introduce myself right now. I'm going to wait until we kind of get some more people on because most of y'all right now that are on, you already know me. I feel like I'm cut off here on TikTok. Here we go. There we go. Um, so I do want to talk about. Maybe really two tax tips, because remember, I told y'all I'm going to be giving you a little bit of information every night. We're not going to go into everything at once. So I want to go over what I talked about earlier, which is um, under the tax part. I talked about when you have a divorce decree. Don't I'm not a speller. I'm a numbers person. So hopefully that's right. OK. So if any of you all have been married or separated and divorced, then you understand what I'm saying as far when it comes as far as when it comes to a dealing with a divorce decree, right? And then I'm gonna give y'all a, a credit. We're gonna talk about something with credit. I haven't formally decided yet, but these are some of the things and notes I want to have on the board, right? Again, TikTok. I'm on TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. Under Patrice L. Stewart. YouTube, you can always go back and watch the replays. And you can come on TikTok because that's usually where I'm the longest. All right. I'll wrap up at the end with TikTok. Um, so earlier I had jumped on and my internet was kind of real crappy. Right. So I wanted to re-talk about this. All of you all that are on TikTok right now, I need you to do me a favor. Y'all know I, got, I have not been on live for like three weeks. So we got to get my page back up. So what do you do to help me? Help you, right? Double tap that screen. Everybody that's on here watching right now, all 15 people, I need y'all to go hard in the paint with me to double tap that screen. How do you double tap the screen? You take your finger or your thumb and you double tap that screen and you're going to start seeing little hearts on the side, all right? Uh, help me as I help you, okay? This, this is, it's a reciprocal thing. If you're on YouTube, hit the like button while you're watching this video. Whenever you all get real professionals that take time out of their day to provide information with, for you, please like their pages, like the video, like the content. All right. That's how you support people who are trying to help you. All right. Um, now, earlier, as I said, I was talking about divorce decrees. So I get a lot of inbox messages and I don't respond to everybody because I don't have time to respond to 200 messages a week. Right. But this particular message I felt needed to be said. This is a message that I felt like a lot of you all may have this question and you don't know what to do, especially if you're a man. If you are a man, share this live right now with one of your male friends. OK, because uh, unfortunately, I feel like more men go through this than women. Um, it's just part of the game. I've been in this industry almost 20 years and this is just what you see. Right. So you may be with somebody and you've been married, uh, living together. It, usually this is dealing with, with marriage. Let's just say that. 
So if you have a formal divorce decree, if you've been married and divorced or separated, you all know that a lot of times when you go to court, you have to come up with an agreement when it comes to the finances. Who can claim the child? Who can do what on the taxes? TikTok. Y'all like the funny? Because I don't see not one heart on here. I don't, I don't see not one heart. Not one heart. What what the double tap said? We we ain't even at 10,000 likes. What's going on? Hello? 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 I need y'all to double tap that screen, baby. That's it. I'm going to turn y'all camera around. Y'all finna get on put on punishment. <laughs> Shoot. Let's roll, baby. You're not finna play me, okay? Um, so when you have a divorce decree or when you separate it from your spouse, there is usually documentation, especially if you go to court, right? So if you go to court, you can now the judge says, okay, you get to file, um, the husband gets to file. I years. The wife gets to file even years, okay? If you don't... All right, y'all slowly trying to get it together over here. Let's see. <laughs> Double tap that screen, TikTok, okay? Um, if you do not... I'm sorry. I'm all over the place because they getting on my nerve over here. Y'all know how I am on here. Don't play with me, all right? <laughs> I have to have those likes. That's what helps my page and my channel, all right? Um, what was I saying? So when you go to judge says, hey, wife, you get to file on I husband, you get to file on even years, right? Some of y'all ladies about to be real, real with you because, you know, I'm the realist tax and business strategist. Some of y'all really be playing games, ladies, for real. And you be in your feelings and you be like, this child live with me. I take care of them all year. I do this. I do that. I'm filing them anyway. When in a legal documentation, it says that your ex-husband has the right to file that child on I years. Now, in the event that you do that, and this is the question that I got, was if my ex filed the child on the year that I'm supposed to file the child, how can I still claim the child and get the credit, right? And so I said, okay, this 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 may be something we need to bring up, right? So that's what I'm gonna start doing, answering some of these questions on the live with y'all, because a lot of y'all had the same question, right? So this is what you have to do, man or woman. I'm just gonna say I see this more with men than women, all right? Now, if I'm gonna just use it as the example how I wanna use it, take it how y'all ever wanna take it. So if husband. If the female files the child on your year, let's say you were supposed to file the child last year for 2022 taxes, right? And now when you went to go file, it said that the child had already been claimed. Because this is the thing, when you file electronically, you can only file one social security number one time electronically in a year, right? So if any of you all ever had um, children, parents, whatever, and you had your and you were filing your taxes, and the tax person was like, Oh, the refund got rejected because the social security has already been used, right? If that ever happens, right? If that if that happened, what you have to do is you still can have the tax return prepared or prepare the tax return with their name. your tax return out you have to also include the divorce decree and the paperwork along um and i would actually have like an additional letter so like for my client that i helped last year this 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 was this happened to, to one of my clients actually um we had to put a package together and mail it in it did take a couple of months maybe like six or seven months but guess what he got his direct deposit he got his $9,000 that he was looking for because at that point, what happened was what they're, what the IRS is going to do is the mother claimed the child during tax set time in February. Let's say she claimed the child in February and she got her refund. She claimed the child. She got everything. Your taxes still have your preparer file your taxes, add the child's name 
onto the tax return as a dependent like you would normally do. But instead of hitting e-file, you can't e-file it because it's already been filed by the mother. So you have to mail it in. But the beautiful thing is those of you men and women who keep your paperwork, baby, okay? That's why you go to court. Y'all don't only go to court to kind of figure out the numbers. You go to court to get that paperwork, all right? That paperwork is legal and binding. And the mother or father is in breach of contract if they are filing the kids on the years that you're supposed to be filing them, okay? So that is how you handle that situation. And any of you all, really, even if you're not dealing with a divorce decree, if you have proof that this is your child, you, you have paperwork, you have whatever, you can still process the tax return. You just have to mail it in. It may take a longer process. It may take more time, but it doesn't matter. It's your right to claim those children on those years that you have specified, okay? Now, what I would say is most men let this go. Most most men just let it go. They're like, I'm not going to argue with her about it. It is what it is. But if you are a father and you want to claim your child as your right, especially if you have it in a legal divorce decree, separation decree, all you need is that paperwork. That's it. The IRS will review that. They will open up an investigation. They will open up a report and then they will review it. And nine times out of 10, you will receive your refund. There's no reason why you shouldn't receive the refund because the divorce decree lays it right out. Dad has even years, mom has odd years. Or mom has odd years, dad has even years. It's as simple as that. Ladies, some of y'all be in y'all feelings and feelings and emotions get you messed up because now guess what? My client, baby mama, she owed $9,000. So that same refund that she got, the IRS took that refund from her and now she owes that money because she was not supposed to claim that child, right? So if you dealing with a man who's serious about his paperwork, y'all better watch out, especially if you if he get a tax advisor like me. Hello, I don't give a damn what feelings you in. If it say it on paperwork, it that's what it is. Simple as that, okay? So I wanted to go back over that because I started that video earlier today and it got cut off earlier today. So I just wanted to finish what I was saying in that video when it comes to dealing with divorce and agreements and paperwork and things like that. Okay. Um, the other thing that I wanted to go back over with you all was what I said yesterday regarding the 1099Ks, right? So actually the IRS did decide to wait and not make you all report um, those 1099K payments from like Cash App and PayPal. They kept it at the $20,000. Now they did say that they're going to implement mid-year um, for you to be able to start reporting at $5,000. So if you start, so, so right now in the tax season, you good, right? After tax season around mid-year, June or July, they're going to implement that for 20, for starting for next year. So then that way, any of you all who are using Cash App and Venmo and PayPal, y'all are going to have to start reporting that income once you get to 5,000. Right now, this year, they just left it alone, left it the same. So you all don't have to report that. In. Now, this is what I also want to say on that, though. Personally, not personally, business wise, because I'm also a business owner outside of being a tax professional, right? Business wise, you really should still be reporting your income, whether you get a 1099 or not. Why? Because you want to show your income. You want to show your sales. So even if PayPal don't send you a 1099 because you made 18,000, they're not going to send you one until you made 20,000. But on your income, on your Schedule C and your sales and income, you still should be reporting your actual sales that you made. OK, um, because, again, you're going to have you're going to have deductions. But some of you all don't want to claim that income and not going to grow. This is why your business is not going to grow. This is why you're not going to ever get any loans towards your business because you don't want to report income. All right. 
So if you want to stay side hustling, that's what you do. But at, at some point, they are going to start implementing these 1099Ks across the board. Now, I also want to say this. If you are a business owner and you have paid somebody more than $600, you should be issuing people a 1099. All right. Anybody that you have done professional business with, whether you hired a contractor, whether you paid, um, I don't know, your plumber to come in and do something. Right. Anything that you've done over six hundred dollars or, or I'm sorry, that you've issued a payment out over six hundred dollars. You should be actually creating and issuing those people a 1099. So when you all are working with people, you should start having them fill out a W-9 form. On that W-9 form, it's going to have an individual so they can put their name and their social or they can put their company. They can put their EIN and their company information and then they have to sign on it. So me, if I work with you and I'm paying you money through my business, even if you invoicing me, I'm still saying I need you to fill out this W-9 because I'm able to now write off that income, right? So when we're a business owner, in order for us to write off the income, right, we have to also show proof that the income that we made, we paid some of it out. Because a lot of you all right now, if you're getting a 1099, you may get a hundred thousand dollar ten ninety nine, but you didn't keep all that money. You may have paid ten thousand to your plumber. You may have paid ten thousand to your your worker, right? You may have paid money out, but guess what? You have nothing or no receipts or no paperwork that shows that you paid that money out, besides maybe a transfer out of your bank account or a Zelle or something like that. You get what I'm saying? So filling out paperwork and having W-9s on hand, that also helps you with the IRS when it comes to, okay, I made 100000 but I'm not claiming 100000 because I paid this much out. Because when we're business owners, we have to claim all of the income. All of the income gets reported to you. So the IRS doesn't know what you're paying out. You get what I'm saying? Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Now I'll take a moment. And take a sip of water. How long I've been on here? Eight, 17 minutes. And answer any questions if I have any. I saw some people on TikTok saying they got questions. I'm not answering nobody questions on TikTok. Y'all not even, we ain't even at 10,000 likes. Y'all can, y'all can get there and then I'll start answering questions. Um, YouTube, hello. If you have any questions, you could go ahead and put one down now. Hello, good evening, Coco Dish. Um, Facebook, I don't think I got nobody on here asking any questions. Y'all delusional on here. I know, I know he joking, so I need a 50K refund. Y'all delusional. Refunds come from really you putting money in. Refunds just don't don't just make you just don't make fifty thousand dollars appear. I mean, I know all of the fraudsters told y'all y'all can get these thirty thousand dollar refunds these last two years. So a lot of y'all delusional as hell on here. Are there business credits for small business owners? Um, there are. I I wouldn't necessarily say. There are formal business credits. Now, do you qualify for those different credits? It, it, it just, it, it's impossible for me to talk about di the different business credits. I'm not prepared for that tonight. But are there actual credits? Yes, there are. Uh, one, of the, one of the actual good credits that you get is if you are a business owner, we have, um, we actually have a lot. You get, you get credits, it just depends on what you are. And what kind of business are you? When you say small business owner, because that's the other thing I need y'all to start understanding. Business is such a wide range. You got self-employed 1099 who file on the schedule C. Y'all are like the y'all are like level one when it comes to business. Right. Then you have LLCs level two. Then you have corporations level three. Then you have escort level four. Right. Then you may have a non for profit. Let's say that's a level five. So business is not a one size fit all. It's a different level for each business, depending on how you're set up and how you are paying taxes. Right. 
So you could be an LLC, but if you're a single member LLC, you're filing on a Schedule C tax form. You could be an LLC, but you may be a LLC with an S Corp, right? Or you may be an LLC that's taxed as a corporation. So your business is going to be completely different. You get what I'm saying? So that's, you all, we need to start breaking that stuff down and stop lumping everybody in one as business because it's not that way. All right. But in a nutshell, yes, there are a lot of tax credits. You got fuel tax credit. If you in the trucking industry, if you in the farming industry, a lot of those do it, which is another reason why the IRS shut down last year, because so many of y'all fraudsters were doing the fuel tax credit. So many of y'all was trying to do the ERC credit. ERC credit is for real business owners who have employees like people who are an escort. Right. Or like people who are a corporation with employees, an LLC with employees. Most, let's just say this, most small business owners who are self-employed, you all are, do not have employees. You're self-employed. Right. But so many people were telling you that that credit was for you. So it is what it is. I, I ain't going to get into all that. But it's a lot of credits. It just depends on what your business is, what your industry is and, and, and what you qualify for. Yeah. Okay. If you a cargo van business with the LLC, that's cool. It's that's still no way for me to sit here and run down what kind of credits you qualify for. Uh, but just know as a business that you have you do qualify. There are credits. Whether you qualify for them or not, that has to be determined. That's the best way that I could say that. Um good evening, Tashina. Okay, I think I saw a credit with uh I think I finally saw somebody on Facebook. TikTok, once y'all get to 10,000, then y'all can actually get some questions answered. Until then, I will not be answering questions on TikTok because y'all tripping. The hearts ain't going nowhere, nothing. Y'all know how we roll on TikTok. It's called Help Me Help You. I give you information for free and you give me likes and follow the page and like the page and like the channel and get those likes up. Uh, first question on Facebook is, uh, thank you. You say good information, right? If you don't pay taxes, how can you get a 50 K refund? Exactly. Like they delusional as hell. They be listening to all these scammers and frosters. That's all. All the kids on here playing games with these people in their social security number. They think it's sweet. Um, all right. So no other questions right there. Big dude, I'll answer you because I know you probably the only one on here tapping. Uh, you've been tapping. Can you go three years as a business and not file taxes? Can you go three years as a business? Yes, you can. Should you? No, you shouldn't. I mean, simple as that. You cannot file taxes for your whole life if you don't want to. That's up to you. <laughs> so can you do it? Yeah, you can do anything you want to do. But should you do it? That's a whole nother other conversation, right? So that's the best way to answer that. And this is, again, this is why I want y'all to know and understand when y'all say y'all in business, okay? Because this is the thing. When you claim to be a business and a business owner, why are you not doing certain things? Why are you not keeping up with your paperwork? Why are you not claiming your income? Why are you not filing taxes? Because when you file that paperwork with the state and you say, I am a LLC, I am a corporation, you are letting them know that you have started a business and you plan on making money. So that's why I said so many of y'all start businesses and then be like, well, I started an LLC, but I ain't did nothing with it. Then close it. You're not a business. You're not a business owner. So why are you trying to reap the benefits of a business owner when you're not working the business like a business owner? That's y'all problem. Y'all just want the business for paperwork to try to write off on the Schedule C like you got this business. But baby, they've been cracking down with y'all because they know y'all been lying. They, be, they know y'all been lying for years. But the PPP pandemic just put it to a whole nother other level of which y'all lying. You get what I'm saying? So now they're requiring more. That's the reason why you have to do that BOI report. That's the reason why you have to now report to FinCEN, okay? Because they say now, if you're a business, 
let it be known. Where the proof at? Show me. Show me the money. Tell me where it's at. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And so this is why I'm trying to tell you all, if you are not ready to do certain things and you're not ready for that next level, you're not ready to take that step like you thought you were, just dissolve the LLC, dissolve the corporation, right? And that is why some of you stay a sole proprietor for so long and you just file on the Schedule C because you up and down. You're not really serious with it. It's really a side hustle. And technically, when you have a side hustle, you are not supposed to be adding that to your income tax return. You get what I'm saying? You only add that Schedule C when you're doing real business. And this last couple of years has been showing y'all who's really in business and who playing games. And it's a lot of y'all on here playing freaking games. Simple as that. So quit playing the games, get out the big boy league and go sit down and come back when you're ready. Like It's just that simple. Okay. Uh, let me scroll up. We still, I, we still ain't even at 10K likes. I'm so sick of y'all on TikTok tonight. I'm going to answer my loyals who I know been liking. Sick Hustles has been telling me you've been uh, doing the, the likes since, since you joined the live. Thank you. Six hustles, big dude, two nights in the row. Okay, that's he said that. I will miss for the world doing a good focus and some stuff myself. That's what's up, big dude. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being you. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see the next question. I'm in open QA session right now. So if y'all got a question, go on here and type it out. Say, not the corner. Yes, y'all had to get put in the corner. Y'all had to get put in the corner. Y'all was acting up over here. You know we're supposed to keep them hearts rolling. I teach y'all community, right? If everybody worked together, it won't feel like work. It's 38 of y'all on here. If everybody was double tapping the screen, we would have been at the 50,000 likes like I asked for, right? But some people sitting there lazy and mo and then there's some of y'all that's doing all the work. So I can actually see who's liking. It lets us know. So I appreciate those of you who value my my what I'm doing for you and how I'm helping you. Because that's literally all you have to do is double tap the screen to show that support. Uh, beautiful the clown. My sister passed on August 2nd. I um, first want to acknowledge that and say I'm sorry for your loss. I have her two kids since am I allowed to claim her kids? Um, I don't know everything with this situation. You said you have her kids. So if you have legal uh, guardianship of her kids, then yes. Um, if you're just watching them, but somebody else has maybe legal guardianship or paperwork, then that could be an issue for you later on if they ever wanted to file the children. But um, if you are their legal guardian, then yes, you would definitely have rights to be able to file your sister's children. Uh, Ali Cocaine says, my sister got identity theft. Someone's been filing my niece for over 10 years. 10 years? What the hell? Y'all ain't never found the baby? <laughs> Unfortunately, y'all waited too long, baby. You can't go back 10 years on, on somebody. Because even if you went back 10 years, guess what? The IRS is not refunding you for the last 10 years. The most that you would go back and do is three years. So the, remember this. The IRS only refunds you up until the last three years. Okay? So we're in 2024. So we're doing 2023 taxes. So you got 2023, you got 2022 taxes, and you got 2021. Those are the only three years that they're going to issue you a refund on. Anything past that, you can file it, but then it's not like they're going to give you no credit or nothing either. They're not giving you the money, period. That's that's just it. So they only issue you a refund for the last three years. So that's a lesson learned for you for your sister. Uh, she should have been checking that way before allowing somebody to claim her kid for 10 years. That's a lesson that she will have to that, you know, we got to learn life lessons. That's that's one for her. Right. So that's the best that she could do. Now, she can contest the last three years. Um, but again, you would have to do that process. I don't know if you were on in the beginning when I first started, when I talked about uh, the, the, the divorce decree. 
which is if someone files your child unlawfully, right, or they're not supposed to, you will have to mail in the tax return and actually probably also have a one pager to describe to the IRS as to why you are um, opening up an investigation for those three years for that dependent. And then they will open up a whole investigation. More than likely, they're going to respond asking you to prove that that's your child. They may ask her for birth certificate. They may ask for daycare records, something to prove that she the child lives in the home uh, with her and that that's her actual daughter. Since somebody else has been claiming that child for 10 years, she's definitely going to have to provide proof as to that she's the mother, right? So it's possible, right? Let's just say it's possible, but the most she'll get is the last three years. Um, I answered big dude on that one already. You said it was suggested from a tax professional not to claim your business for three years. I, I would not call them a tax professional. Take professional off of that. That doesn't make any sense. I'm not going to tell my business client, don't worry about it. Just don't file, you know, for three years. Maybe no. That, a real professional would not say that. So remove professional off of that person's name because they don't know what they're talking about. As an underwriter that sells insurance policy, I was told that I'm an independent franchise. How would I make um how would I make <laughs> this is another reason why I do lives too? Because a lot of y'all be calling people professional baby that don't know jack to the dirt. Y'all need to quit putting a, a label and a name on these people and start calling them for what they are. Side hustling taxes. It's as simple as that. You know, everybody and their mama want to do taxes, but most of these people are not reading the laws and have no clue what the hell they are talking about. Okay. So that's another reason why I get on here. So y'all can actually see and understand what a professional look like, because that ain't it. That's not it at all. At all. <laughs> and I'm not even the average professional because I do what I want to do. Talk how I want to talk. Sometimes I make cuss or throw a little F-bomb in there. Some people don't think that's professional. But at the end of the day, I'm actually on here being my natural self. I'm not sugarcoating. Not writing, and that's what I love about what I get to do is I get to come on and be me. 1000%. I don't have to change up and switch up and do the corporate code and now I got to switch up. Y'all know how it is. I don't got to do that. I'm on here talking just the way I am, but at the same time, I'm very knowledgeable and it speaks for itself. So whoever like it, like it, and who don't, don't. It is what it is. How would I keep up with paying taxes? So when you're an independent insurance policy, like say you're an independent contractor in a nutshell, okay? Um, you have to you have to carry your own taxes, right? When you get that money or that payout, they pay you ten thousand dollars outright. So unlike with a W two, when you get paid ten thousand, you got federal coming out, you got FICA coming out, you got Medicare coming out, you got state coming out, right? That's the difference with a W two. So when you all are independent contractors, you literally should have accounts set up. So if I got ten thousand dollars, what you should be doing is that $10,000 is not your money. And that's the problem that most of y'all have, right? You think, oh, I got $10,000 cash, right? But at the end of the year, they're going to report that money. So you actually are supposed to have a savings account. You actually supposed to have a tax account set up. You actually supposed to have an emergency fund. So when that 10,000 at minimum, let's just say 25%, okay? At minimum. So $2,500 should have went to savings. $2,500 should have went to taxes. And maybe you want to throw $500 in your emergency fund. So that's $5,500. Y'all don't want to do that, though. Because y'all like, oh, I need this money. This is my money. This is my money. It's not your money. Because that's what you agree to when you are an independent contractor. You are getting paid your way. You're getting paid everything up front without no taxes taken out. And that's why so many of y'all don't want to file taxes when it's time because you have not saved properly the way that you're really supposed to be. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand it's hard, right? With the pandemic and you may not have a $10,000 a month every month, right? So I went high. Let's even go low. Let's say you're not doing 25%. But it ain't no way in hell out of 10,000, you're not supposed to put nothing up. 
you really have no money management skills. And this is what I'm trying to teach and tell y'all. You have no money management skills if you got 10000 and you don't put a dollar in none of these. At minimum, you should do 1000 a thousand, two fifty, something. Okay, <laughs> but this y'all problem. Y'all want to make this, and then at the end of the year, oh, I owe all these taxes. Yeah, cause you're not planning properly. You know it and understand your pay, right? So this is why some people have to go back and get a W two job or other things because the taxes are coming out. But also when you understand that you're going to be an independent contractor, you have to learn money management. You have to learn this type of stuff. You have to. It's imperative. Or you're going to be struggling and living check to check and being in a poverty mindset your whole life. Okay? So this is another reason why I get on here and talk to y'all. Being in financial services almost 20 years, this is the stuff that I've seen over and over and over and over. And unfortunately, it's a lot more with people who look like me versus other nationalities. They actually, a lot of them do still have some knowledge of savings and taxes. But with us, it's a lot of us that are not financially educated and literate or, no, or have any money management skills, right? So I may sound harsh to some of you, but I'm really giving you real facts and reality. So take it for face value. She said, I'm driving. I understand if y'all driving and y'all working. It's okay. Uh, I don't formally offer any products. I'm a service provider. So I have several services that I offer. I do taxes. I do tax consulting. I do business consulting and coaching and strategy. Um, so I offer a, a, a bunch of different things. I have an online academy. We have an online monthly membership academy where you all are learning a lot of stuff in that academy. We have over 40 vid video modules in my online academy, and it's only $50 a month. So I go over taxes, credit, business. I think we just uploaded the LLC versus S Corp into the academy. So um, as far as services, that's what I offer. I don't sell a product itself. I'm a service provider. Um, you said you asked for 10K. How we need 50K now. <laughs> no, it was a guy on Facebook saying he need 50K, a 50K refund. And I was like, baby, you delusional. <laughs> you didn't let the cousins to tell you that you could get a $30,000 tax refund. So now they all think they can get it. Mo, don't get scared now, baby. Y'all be so... Y'all be so good. Y'all be so quick to file that exemption and then get on here talking about, I'm scared I done filed an exemption. What they going to do? Get get up off that exemption. That's the first thing you need to do if you've been filing it for a long time, baby. Get up off that exemption. Pay them people their money. Start paying them people their money. Okay? You got to get up off that exemption because that's, that's not good for you. Um, Facebook, do you all have any questions? Okay, I think I do see a couple on here. I answered a couple on TikTok. TikTok, hit that double tap. Get them likes up. Uh, okay, no, I answered that one. What What at Navy Federal not giving loans to blacks? It was in the news. So D, you said what at Navy Federal? So the mortgage loan was what was in the news for Navy Federal. Yeah. Navy Federal was in the news for not giving mortgage loans to black people. So that's what they were in the news about. I had so many people inboxing me about that. Like it was more than enough of y'all on the internet talking about it. I didn't need to talk about that. I can't just shut my accounts down with them. I got loans and credit cards. What y'all want me to do? Just close everything out because they not giving mortgages to black people. Like, let's be realistic. Now we now I did, I do have a list of 20 other credit unions that we could you could start going through to use that do to do your uh save and secure loan with. You don't got to do your save and secure loan with Navy Federal no more. So when I when the next time I go over save and secure loan, Navy Federal won't be the um highlight. I'll be highlighting a new credit union because they did do that. Cause I definitely did do some research. And they that was true was how they was uh discriminating against black people with the mortgages. Uh, what if you pay yourself a W-2 out of your business? 
If you pay yourself a W-2, then you cool. If you pay yourself a W-2, then you cool, but you still have to file a business tax return. You know that, right? So business and you, your personal W-2 goes to you personally, but the business itself is still separate. Um, you say Navy Federal, you... You only do vehicles with Navy Federal, Deborah. Okay. Uh, are they raising the child credits this year? So I talked about that yesterday. There's no guarantee. As of right now, the child tax credit is still at what it is, which is the, um, what is it, $2,000 up to, uh, uh, but refundable up to, let me just look real quick. <clears throat> I got so much on my mind. I can't remember every law. Yeah, it's the same. So up to the $2,000 per qualifying child, but only up to like $1,200 is refundable. So $2,000 is the formal credit, but they only giving you like up to $1,200 as a full refundable credit. I could pull up the whole thing on the IRS. That's what I should do. Yeah, up to 17. Uh, with that, you can include your son, daughter, stepchild, foster child, brother, sister, stepbrother, stepsister, half brother, half sister, um, and then or a deceased or a descendant of one of those. So, like the young lady said, her sister passed away. She's able to claim her sister's child, right? If your brother passed away, you're able to claim like your niece or your nephew. Or your grandchild, even grandkids. Grandparents can't claim their grandkids because we know many of grandparents are taking care of their grandkids. Um, oh, yeah. So I answered everybody up to Facebook. YouTube don't have any more questions. And then let me get back to TikTok. So TikTok, <clears throat> TikTok, let's do another double tap countdown, please, for those of you all that are still on here. I know y'all, some of y'all fingers are tired, but let's go. Uh, I filed exempt. Now I'm scared. Scared money don't make no money. So don't be scared now. But like I said, just make sure you got off of that exemption. She went to a random tax lady and every year she tried to file her, she always filed. Mm. You say, oh, I told her, yeah. That's why y'all can't be going out here to these randoms. They legit be taking y'all kids. Like I've, I've heard this year. After, that's not nothing new. I'm not surprised if you notice I'm on here smiling. I, you know, I hate to say it like that, because, but that's, that's the problem. So many people... Don't think you're giving your kids name, social security number, date of birth to a rando. These people ain't got no credentials. They don't have an office location. At least y'all know Patrice is in Chicago at 1200 West 35th Street, right? <laughs> like <laughs> She has a business. She has an email, a business phone number. She has an assistant. They answer the phone. You know, like y'all just be out here giving your information to a chick in the basement on the Internet, on Instagram, and the story. Somehow she could get you 10 bands and you rolling with it, baby. And that's the reason why people like your sister are not my clients, because I don't deal with that type of mentality. Right. But I love to get on here and talk about y'all like that. Right. Because I've seen it my entire career. <laughs> but, but, and, you know, it is what it is. So that's that, that's what she got to deal with. So, yeah. So now that lady done got seven years worth of her daughter and she can't even get that money back. So the most she can go back is three years to try to get her daughter and claim her own child. Shameful. Shameful. Uh, can I claim my God child? So I just broke down and read the, what the, what, who you can formally claim 
per the IRS, right? So they don't live, they don't have God child listed. But I would say, again, if the child lives in your home, if you're taking care of the child, if you could show proof that the child lives with you and you take care of that child, hey, then, you know, go for it. I would ask for supporting documents, though, if, you know, for somebody like you, if you came to me and said that, I would ask you for supporting documents, which would be, you know, to prove that the child lives with you. And a lot of a lot of records that they accept are like daycare records, medical records that have your home address on it. So that has to match. Um, so there are certain documentation that the IRS approves as qualifying documents. And as a tax professional, uh, we will more we will probably ask you for that. Right. So if you're saying she's your God child and not your actual daughter. Um, if I file. OK. Yeah. All right. TikTok, y'all coming on with some questions for a little bit. Hold on, I got that fan up too high. That's too much air on me now. I was hot. It can go from side to side. Now the lights is not as bad tonight. They usually be beaming on here. I be sweating. Okay. What type of business taxes, Deborah? Business is very different. It's four different, five different levels of business. Are you a sole proprietor? Are you an LLC? Are you a corporation? Are you an S corp? Is there's no such thing as what, um, what? How much does business taxes cost? That's that's too much. It's too. It's too. It's it's different variables. I need to know and understand that. So just so you know, taxes for me, how I charge by taxes, I charge by the number of forms that we fill out for you. Taxes are not a one size fit all. Right. So somebody who has one W-2 with no dependents, your tax return is going to be probably less than three hundred dollars. Right. Somebody who has eight W-2s with two dependents, a house, um, some stocks, options, your tax return. I don't know what your tax return may be. It may be six fifty. Right. So when it comes to forms, so we charge you by the number of forms. So however many forms that I'm filling out for you. Every individual person is different, right? So all of you all combined on here, it's about 100 people watching me online. Every single one of y'all have a different tax return, okay? So I don't have standard fees. I have a list of, of forms with fees on them, okay? So when you tell me, on average, I have a, a LLC. LLCs, I charge about $750 to do your taxes right? Anywhere between 500 and 750. Let's just say that. That will include your 1040, your Schedule C, especially if you are a single member LLC. If you are a corporation and we file an 1120 tax return, if your income is under $250,000, I charge about $1,250 for that corporate tax return. If your income is over 250,000, we have to do more additional forms, right? So those start at 1,500 and up because once you start making 500,000, a million dollars in your corporation, there's additional forms that we have to fill out. There's additional documentation that I have to fill out, right? So that is how taxes are broken down in my world, right? So there's not a one size fit all. So I don't know what your tax rate is gonna be until I see what your forms are. So you saying, I got two kids, I got this, I got that. None of that means nothing, all right? I have to actually enter your forms into the tax system, see what you have, see what you calculate, see what your dollar amounts are, okay? Because your dollar amounts are different when it's when it comes to taxes. So on average, when you're under two hundred and fifty thousand in income, you're you're going to you're going to be at that base starting point. But that's why I do have a sheet where we have a starting point so you can kind of guesstimate, OK, I need about seven fifty to work with Patrice if I want to file my taxes. You get what I'm saying? But I can't tell you what your exact amount is going to be until I enter in all of your forms 
all of your amounts, all of your unique documents that go with your taxes, okay? And then I can give you a final number. That's how taxes work. <clears throat> Everybody don't pay the same thing because you don't have the same type of income and documentation. Um, okay. Uh, can I claim my parents? You can claim your parents, but you really don't get much for your parents no more. Back in the day, they was giving you like earned income credits for your parents. Now you probably get like $300 for your mama or your daddy. Cause they seniors, they older. You don't get a credit. It's called the, it's called a other dependent credit. That's what you, that's what your parents would qualify under the other dependent tax credit. So they have a child tax credit and then they have a other dependent credit. Now that other dependent credit though, you also need to be careful with that because let's say your parents make money, right? Let's say your parents get a retirement or a social security. That's going to affect you. So if you're claiming a dependent and they have a nice, and they have income over that income threshold, then you can't claim them as a dependent. So you all also need to be careful with that when you're claiming your parents, because if your if your parents get income like Social Security or your mom gets retirement checks from your dad pat, passing, that's income. So if your mom got thirty thousand dollars in income and you're trying to claim her as a dependent, it's possible that they could come and audit you and remove her from that because she makes too much money for you to really be claiming her as a dependent. You get what I'm saying? So all of that has to look in. Has, we have to look at all of that when you're trying to claim your parents for that other um that other tax credit other other dependent that's what it's called other dependent um credit <clears throat> i do pay my parents bills not all but half i do not live with them yeah see another thing is when y'all want to claim y'all parents they have to technically really be living with y'all cuz again a dependent is normally in your home so yes we taking care of our parents right Yes, we doing these different things. And this is, again, why I am a tax strategist, <clears throat> because if I had a client who was spending that much money out of pocket to take care of their parent, I would make you set up a business and I make you. I would advise you to set up a business because now how can you write off those expenses? Mm, whole other ball game now, right? So that's the reason why we do tax strategy. Because you can literally strategize a game plan once you see where your money is going. That's the whole reason why we do business and tax strategy, right? As a business owner, once you start making money, you want to see where your money is going. And how can I save and not paying taxes if I put this money in certain pots, right? So that's the whole thing with taxes is planning for it, strategizing, looking at it looking at the big picture and then devising a actionable game plan to where you can now actually receive some credit back for that. So, um, so yeah, just because you take care of a household, that's not really a tax write off for you. And like I said, claiming them, you probably maybe get $300 if that right at that point. So it just depends. <clears throat> All right, I have been on here 53 minutes. I'm literally only doing one hour today because I got work to do before I get out of here. We got a snowstorm coming tonight. Um, so I'm not trying to be down here at the office all night and I will be getting off of here in the next 10 minutes. So uh, drop any of your last questions if you do. If you would like to work with me, my information is back here. That's my office phone number. This is my uh, site that has a little bit of everything. So if you want to join my email list, we send out emails. If you want to um, keep up to date with whatever classes or workshops that I have, all of that is on my link tree. plstuart.club slash tree is the link. OK, you can take a screenshot of that. You can call my office. My assistant, Catherine, will help you. Um, I do also have another partner that I have that does taxes, Michelle Vanison. She's going to be, you all will be talking to her this year as well, because she'll be doing a lot of people's intake forms and things like that. Uh, but I do have my information on the board behind me if you want to get in contact with me. You can also text this number, 
So this is a number, my business number, but we you can text us on this number. So if you have, um, you know, you need a link, you need me to send you the link to your phone, you can always text me and say, hey, send me your booking link, send me your whatever, you know, whatever you need, the class, send me your email list or whatever, and we can respond to you that way. Um, so I think I've answered everybody up to that point of the raising tax credits. I answered that. I answered that. I answered that. Okay. Yeah. I answered everybody. It's a TikTok. Y'all the last ones. <clears throat> Most say because they don't teach us this, they should staff in school. They should. And that's actually what my online education is called. What they don't teach you in school. That is exactly what my online uh, education community is. The one that's $49 a month. What they don't teach you in school. We have over 40 modules in there. Uh, I go live in that group. We do dinner and learns. I interview a um, new expert every month in that group, in that community. We have study hall with Coach Chuck. Coach Chuck comes on and teach y'all some stuff. So that's a great community if you wanted to get in and learn um, a lot because we talk about taxes, business, credit. We talk about a bunch of different topics within that community. But that's exactly what my school is called is what you don't learn in school because they don't teach this. They do not teach you this in school at all. Um, I do not have how to have a credit business in the academy. Where do you go to stay up to date with tax laws? So one of my main resources is irs.gov. I also take tax educational classes. I'm in the tax industry. So there's a bunch of different websites and resources that a lot of us use in the industry uh, to do continuing education. Um, but the irs.gov is going to be your best friend. So if you wanted to start learning about tax laws, you can go straight to the source which is irs.gov, go to publications and start reading up the publications. It's hundreds of thousands of them. Um, Yahaya, hello, good evening. Come on, don't make me jump on the highway. I don't make random calls. <laughs> I don't make random calls. So mostly everything has to be booked with me. Um, I know some of y'all just, you know, you could call my office randomly, but you won't speak to me in order to speak to me it does have to be a, a booked consultation, like on my calendar. Um, I have a lot of people trying to talk to me, uh, because I do have an online, uh, <laughs> an online following and we put our phone number out there and people think they can just call and start talking to me. Unfortunately, y'all, uh, I may be a small business owner, but I'm still the CEO of this company. You can't just call Google and say, I want to talk to the CEO of Google. You can't just call Starbucks and be like, I want to talk to the CEO of Starbucks, right? So I may not be on Starbucks money, but I'm still a CEO. So you can't just randomly get on the phone with me, all right? That has to actually be uh, scheduled, all right? And a lot of my calls are paid calls. So this is why we do these free sessions that you all can get some information, learn a little bit about me and see if you want to spend some money with me. And then you can go ahead and book a consultation. Uh, NAR says, uh, so then what kind of deposits do you take? You say, so what kind of deposits do you take? Are you talking about as far as doing the taxes with deposits? So I do require um, a 199 deposit when we're doing prior year taxes. So if you're in the current year right now, 2023, I don't usually charge you all to look at your paperwork because we're in the current tax year, right? I can bill, if, if you're not paying out of pocket, I can usually bill you out of your taxes if you don't owe. Right. That's part of the reason why I'm an e-file agent and register with the IRS, because I do also offer bank products. So a bank product is I'm able to issue you a cashier's check if you don't have a bank account. I'm able to issue you a, a, a Nespian debit card if you don't have a bank account. That way you can get your refund or you can do direct deposit. But I'm able to take my fee out of your refund if we do a bank product. Now, if you owe the IRS and you're and you have a balance then you have to pay for your taxes up front. 
right? So at that point, we take, of course, cash. Uh, I do have a credit card machine, so we do take credit card. And then I do also take Zelle. I don't do cash app. Uh, I'm a real business and real businesses don't deal with cash app. Too much fraud on that on that app. Um, Zelle is more secure for businesses if y'all are going to take money. Y'all should not be taking money from people on the internet that you don't know, have never seen before through no cash app. I just want to put that out there. Um... So I don't know if that's the question you was asking in our management when you say, so then what kind of deposits do you take? Was that what you were asking me? If not, then you can kind of requalify that. <laughs> you can retype that and then I can let you know. Uh, but I'm going to stay on TikTok a little, about another five minutes and then I'm getting off. So I'm going to log off on YouTube. Thank you all for joining. I'm going to put my booking site and link on here if you would like to work with me. And my office phone number is 773-253-8668. And I'm out. So I'm going to log off of YouTube.